Let me take this opportunity again of welcoming each and every one along to our service today. In the Savior's name, we welcome you, and especially if you're visiting with us, we give you a very warm welcome indeed. We're going to open our service uh, by singing uh, Psalm 100. It's found in page 91 in our own hymn book. The first version, all people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice, him serve with mirth, his praise forth tell, come ye before him and rejoice. Let's stand as we sing this lovely psalm. Let's all stand. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Let us all unite our hearts together in prayer. Let's seek the Lord's face again as we come into his most holy presence. Our loving and gracious and eternal heavenly Father, we thank thee again for this another Lord's day that finds us in the house of God. We thank thee, Lord, for the health and strength that you've blessed us with to be able to come and worship thee in spirit and in truth. And, O oh God, as we lift up our hearts and voices and praise to thee this day, we pray, Lord, as we come to open up thy word, that you would have a word in season for each and every one of our hearts. We thank thee, Lord, for every head bowed in your presence, for every family that's represented. And, O oh God, we pray this day that you would come, Lord, and minister unto our needs. We thank thee, Lord, that thy word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. We thank thee that thy word is forever settled in heaven. And, O oh God, what a privilege it is to open up the Word of God, the inspired Word of the living God, the incorruptible Word of God. And we pray, Lord, today that as we read the Scriptures, as we meditate upon Thy truth, these oracles of God, we pray, Lord, that You would come and speak to all of our hearts. We thank Thee, Lord, for so many here today who can read their title clear to mansions in the sky. You've saved us. 
We thank Thee, Lord, that we're bound for heaven. We praise Thee that our sins, which are many, are forgiven. What a blessing! What a privilege to know that we're redeemed, not with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Oh God, what You've done for us, do for others. We pray for those not saved in the meeting, those perhaps listening on, still strangers to grace and to God, that even this Lord's day, that they will come and put their faith and trust in Thee as their Savior. Lord, bless all our sister congregations. Indeed, wherever Thy word is going forth, bless the proclamation of Thy truth this Lord's day. We just pray now that You'll close us in with Yourself. Remember the sick of our congregation. Remember the elderly. Remember those, Lord, who need that physical touch from Thee. O oh God, raise them to health and strength again, we pray Thee. We pray for those, Lord, that are bereaved. We pray, Lord, that You would comfort their hearts. O oh God, we recognize day by day that in the midst of life we're in death. But we thank Thee that all who die in Christ shall never die. For Jesus said, as I live, so shall ye live. We praise Thee that there's everlasting life to be found in Jesus Christ and in Him alone. So bless us now. We just commit our service to Thee. Be with us. Be one of our number. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing our second hymn this morning. That's good singing. Let us keep it up. 281. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. We'll stand again while we sing.
scripture reading today is taken from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 20, and we're going to commence our reading at verse 7 of this chapter of God's precious, precious Word. Acts chapter 20, and we're going to commence our reading at verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. There sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day, So he departed, and they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comforted. Amen. We'll end our reading there at verse 12, knowing the Lord will bless the reading again of his precious word to all of our hearts. Good to see you all in God's house today. Again, we welcome you in the Savior's name. If you're visiting, give you a very warm welcome indeed, and those tuning in through the social media. And we pray that as we meet together around the Word of God today, that the Lord will come and speak to all of our hearts. The announcements are as follows, and of course, as we announce over the summertime, they're brief, but do remember these meetings in the will of the Lord. The gospel drive-in service tonight at 6.30 p.m., and our sister Natasha Atchison will be singing at the drive-in service tonight and I will be preaching in the will of the Lord. And it was really encouraging to see so many there last Sunday evening. So please remember the drive-in service tonight, 6.30. Come along and bring friends and family with you under the sound of the gospel. It's another opportunity, of course, to get visitors in. And we were encouraged last week to see a good number of visitors in at the drive-in service. Remember the prayer meeting on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. And on Tuesday night, our sister Esther McKee is going to give a report from her missionary trip to Asia. And uh, I would encourage as many to come along as possible. And she will give, Esther will give a detailed account of her missionary trip. So do come along. And if you don't normally come, uh, we would encourage you to come along. I know that you'll be greatly encouraged. Then the service is next Lord's Day, 11.30 and 6.30. And the preacher next Lord's Day will be the Reverend Trevor Baxter. And our brother Stephen Patterson will be singing at the drive-in service next Sunday evening. And of course, these two meetings are preceded by the half hour of prayer. Come along and join with us. And even in the drive-in, if you can come a little bit earlier, we had a time of prayer down there in the Sunday school complex just before the drive-in last Sunday evening. You've been made very welcome to join with us for that short time of prayer this evening. Remember also that this week is the Loch Earn Fundamentalist Convention down in Enniskillen in our church in Bethel. It's on every night this week at 8 p.m. And the Reverend John Armstrong and the Reverend Thomas Murray are the guest preachers at that convention. And the Reverend Samuel Murray will be preaching one night as well as the moderator. So please uh, pray for the meetings. And if you've never been, we would encourage you to go down there and support uh, that week of special meetings going on there now for many, many years. And certainly it has been a source of blessing to the congregation down in Bethel and to the local congregations there down in County uh, Fermanagh. Now, over the holidays, when I'm on holidays, over these next few weeks, our brother, Mr. Johnny Jordan, will be looking after all the visitation. And uh, if you need a minister, the ministers on call will be the Reverend David Smith or the Reverend Trevor 
uh, Baxter. And if you need to get in touch with any of these men, if you see any of the session members or the committee, they'll be able to get you in touch with them. There's still some Vision magazines available, so if you haven't got your copy yet, then please take a copy as you leave the church today. Also remember the Holiday Bible Club from the 5th to the 9th of August. Uh, very soon will come upon us. Pray that the Lord will bless as the children are gathered in again under the sound of God's Word. And again, that sheet should be still at the door if you're able to help. All help is very much uh, appreciated. Now, I think that is all the announcements I want to make. I'm going to sing another hymn, and the offering is going to be taken up for the Lord's work. It's hymn number seven in the hymn book. It's found on page 177. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life in atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. We'll keep our seats as the offering is being taken up.
Please turn again to that portion of Scripture that we read a few moments ago in Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. And with God's Word open before us, let us bow in prayer. And let's seek the Lord's face as we come to consider the Word of the Lord to our hearts today. Our Father in heaven, again we thank Thee for an open Bible. We praise Thee, Lord, for the Scriptures of truth. And we pray, Lord, now as we turn to the sacred page, that You would fill us afresh with Your gracious Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that You would speak to all of our hearts. We pray, Lord, that You would close us in with Yourself, that You would shut out the world. O oh God, help us not to think about the things that we have to do this week, but just now, Lord, we pray that You'll help us to concentrate on the precious Word of God. We pray, Lord, that Your Holy Spirit would take the Word today and apply it upon our hearts and upon our souls as our faces differ so do our needs. O oh God, may there be a Word in season for each and every one of us this evening. We pray, Lord, now come and meet with us. We pray, O oh God, that we might know a real sense of Thy presence. And we'll be very careful, Lord, to give to Thee the praise, the glory, and every bit of the honor. For us in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Look at the beginning of verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. One of the many places where the apostle Paul traveled on his third missionary journey was to the city of Troas. This, of course, was not the first time that Paul was in Troas. Indeed, the apostle stayed in this city on a number of occasions. And when you read Acts 16, verse 8, and 2 Timothy 4, verse 13, you will discover that truth. However, it was during this visit to Troas that we're told that Paul had a most unique worship service. Not only did he preach most of the night, but during his preaching, a young man by the name of Eutychus, who was in the meeting, fell asleep and fell down from a third loft and was killed. He died. That's what we have there, I believe, in the verse 9 of this chapter. Now, we're familiar, I'm sure, with this story. And thank God it had a very happy ending. Eutychus was raised to life again, and the church assembled were greatly comforted and strengthened through the ministry of the Apostle Paul. This incident in Acts chapter 20, I believe, emphasizes to us the importance of meeting together for public worship. And it sets out clearly the New Testament standard for God's people during their public worship. Therefore, very simply this morning, I want to draw your attention to some of the things that are mentioned here in connection with public worship. Child of God, what a blessing it is for you and I to be able to come to church each Sunday, to meet together around the Word of God, and to hear the voice of the Lord speak to us through His Word. And I pray today as we come to consider this worship service here, that the Lord would reinforce upon our hearts the importance, the importance of God's people meeting together to worship in this fashion. First of all, notice with me the day that is specified. Look what it says at the beginning of verse 7. And upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together. The first day of the week, of course, was Sunday. Sunday was the day that the Lord rose again after His resurrection. The Lord rose again the first day of the week. That truth, of course, we all know so well. It's emphasized at the end of the four Gospels. And in Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 6, we read there very clearly that when the Lord Jesus rose again from the dead, He rose again the first day of the week. 
After the resurrection, the disciples of Christ met for public worship on the first day of the week, not on the seventh day, which was the Saturday. The day for public worship, you see, had changed. And that's a truth that you and I know very well. And we're familiar, of course, with Revelation 1 verse 10, where it says concerning John on the Isle of Patmos, John said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So even John on the Lord's day worshipped the Lord and he was in the Spirit in the Lord's day. And it was on that day when the Lord spoke to him specifically and was saying more about the Lord speaking on the Lord's day just in a moment. And also in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 1 and 2, again this truth is emphasized that after the resurrection that God's people met for public worship on the first day of the week. Let me just read you the verses if you're not familiar with them. Now concerning the collection of saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. But Paul there, of course, was emphasizing a number of things, but one of the truths that he emphasized was that all of the churches throughout Galatia met for public worship on the first day of the week. And here in Acts 20 and verse 7, is clearly teaching that after the resurrection, the day for public worship had changed and that the disciples of Christ now worshipped on the first day of the week. Now, it's interesting to note when you consider the continuing ministry of the Apostle Paul, because this does not mean that men like Paul stopped going into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Indeed, we read throughout the book of Acts that Paul went into the synagogue on many occasions on the seventh day. But the reason why he did so was to preach the gospel to the Jews, to see them saved and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. But the time came when even Paul stopped entering into the synagogue. And we read that in Acts chapter 19, verses 8 and 9. So you can see here that the day was changed, and it was changed because of the resurrection of the Lord. This is resurrection day. And as we come to worship the Lord, we come to worship one who is alive forevermore. But child of God, the lesson is simple. There's no substitute for God's people meeting together with each other to worship God on the Lord's day. There's no substitute for God's people meeting together in God's house on the Lord's day to worship Him. And there are many benefits for coming together. And, of course, one of the benefits is that we're in the presence of the Lord today as we meet around the precious, precious Word of God. There's a tremendous text, and I know that it's a text that you're familiar with. In fact, I just want you to keep your hand in Acts chapter 20, and I want you to turn over to it. Although it's a familiar text, it's important to see what the Word of God teaches here in Hebrews chapter 10. It's verse 25 of Hebrews chapter 10. And this is what it says. It says, "...not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together." as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as ye see the day approaching. Sad reality today is that many of God's people fail to meet together in God's house around the Word of God with God's people on the Lord's day. And it was no different in the days of the Apostle Paul. There were many who forsook the assembling of themselves together. But Paul here, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he exhorts God's people not to forget, not to forget, to meet together on the Lord's day to worship the Lord. And child of God, I have to say that even means when we're on holidays. When you're on holidays, seek out a place of worship on the Lord's day because 
the Lord's day does not end when you're on holidays for two or three weeks. And when I go on holiday, we always make sure that we go to God's house on the Lord's day, morning and evening, to worship the Lord. So let's not forget about the Lord when, we, when we're on holidays. There's, there's many verses that we could turn to, and I'm not going to turn you to them, but I'm going to read them out to you. What a blessing it is to come into God's house on the Lord's day. The psalmist said this in Psalm 84, verse 4, Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, they will be still praising thee. In Psalm 26, verse 8, it says, Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Psalm 27, verse 4, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Psalm 122, verse 1, the psalmist said again, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now I know that many because of old age and because of sickness, because of infirmity, they can't get out to God's house anymore. And there are many in this congregation who would love to be here today and uh, but they are not able to be here because of old age and many other infirmities. But I'll tell you this, they would love to be here. And when they were able, they were here. Child of God, when you're able, when you're fit and able, always be in the house of the Lord. There's a tremendous portion of Scripture, and it's found in uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 4 and verse 16. When the Lord Jesus Christ was being brought up in the home of uh, Mary and Joseph, it says this, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. It's those little words, as his custom was. In other words, when he is being brought up in the home of Mary and Joseph, he was brought along to the house of God each Sabbath day. It was his custom. Parents, make sure it's your custom to bring your children into God's house on the Lord's day. So important. Teach your children the importance, the importance of coming into the house of God on the Lord's day and teach them when they're young, young in life. Oh, the day that is specified the day that is specified, upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together. But take a look again at Acts chapter 20 and look with me at verse 7. And you'll notice not only the day is specified, but you'll notice the ordinance that was emphasized. It says, when the disciples came together to break bread. The first day of the week, the disciples came together to break bread. Before the Lord Jesus ascended back to heaven, after his resurrection, he commanded his disciples to remember his death in his appointed way. And of course, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 26, we have the institution of the Lord's day or the the Lord's Supper, rather. I want you to turn over just to Matthew's Gospel for a moment, chapter 26. It's good to remind ourselves of how the Lord instituted the Lord's Supper. It says there in Matthew 26, verse 26, down to verse 29, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and give thanks, and give it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine. Now, when you're considering the Lord's table, the Lord's supper, it's interesting to note, and it's important to note what the Lord says in verse 29, this fruit of the vine. Of course, when we remember the Lord's death, we do not believe in transubstantiation like the Church of Rome. We don't believe that the 
bread turns into the literal body of Christ or the wine turns into the literal blood of Christ. They're symbols of his body and his blood. And that is taught there very clearly because after the Lord broke the bread and blessed it and after he took the cup and blessed it, it was still the fruit of the vine. But he's emphasizing here, he's emphasizing the importance of remembering his death until he returns the second time. The ordinance of the Lord's Supper took place on the Lord's day, of course, when the disciples met together for public worship. And that's what's being emphasized here in Acts chapter 20. Now, some people believe that the Lord's Supper should take place every Sunday. I personally have no objections to that, but I believe as long as the Lord's Supper is being held on a regular basis, then that is sufficient. But we must never forget to remember the Lord's death in His appointed way. And we must never forget that it is an act of remembrance. It is a solemn act of remembrance. And we must always remember that we are remembering what the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished for you and me, child of God, when He died upon the cross of Calvary. We're remembering the importance of His death. And every time we meet around the Lord's table, my, what a privilege it is when we meet to remember His sufferings upon the cross of Calvary. And there upon the middle tree on Golgotha's brow, He died the just for the unjust. And the bread reminds us of a body that was broken. And of course, the the wine reminds us of precious blood that was shed. And it reminds us that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. But thank God, because He did shed His precious blood, and because he did die an atoning death upon Calvary's middle tree, you and I, child of God, have eternal life. Therefore, let us never take it for granted each time we meet around the Lord's table on the Lord's day when we come to remember his death in his appointed way. But notice something else here. Take a look at Acts chapter 20 again. And take a look there at verse 7, at the, near the end of the verse, and you will see here not only the day specified and the ordinance that was emphasized at this public act of worship, but you will notice the word that was magnified. Look what it says there in verse 7. Let's read the verse. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them. I want you to underline those words. When the disciples met together for public worship on the first day of the week, not only did they remember Christ's death in his appointed way, but they also met together to hear the word of God preached. And as verse 7 indicates, Paul preached on this occasion a very long sermon. Indeed, he preached until Midnight, it says there. Indeed, Paul preached so long that a young man, we've already read about it, fell asleep and fell down and was killed. Look at verse 9. We read the verse 9. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sank down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. Now, we know that it all ended well because he was raised to life again. So, there's those, uh, even in Paul's day, who fell asleep when the preacher was preaching. So there was. So, falling asleep in its service is not unusual. But you can see here the importance, the importance that Paul placed upon preaching the Word in the public worship service. And you'll notice here that when Paul was preaching that the presence of God was known in a very, very special way. Well, you know what this teaches us here? It teaches me that these people were enthusiastic to hear the Word of God preached. 
They were enthusiastic to hear the word of the Lord preached. I want you to notice a number of things here. Very simply, there's no substitute for the preaching of God's word when we meet together for public worship. There's no substitute. Now it's good to have singers, and we enjoy them, and it's good to have testimonies, and we enjoy them. But child of God, men and women, there is no substitute for the preaching of God's precious, precious word. The Apostle Paul said in Titus 1 verse 3, but hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, the Apostle Paul said this because he emphasized that through the preaching of God's Word that the saints would be edified. He said this, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the ministry, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And of course, we know when we study the life and ministry of the Apostle Paul that his life and ministry was centered upon the preaching of the Word of the Lord. And that's why it is imperative every time we meet for public worship that we open up the Bible, we read the Scriptures of truth, and we preach God's precious, precious Word. You know, one of the most important aspects of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, was his preaching ministry. I'm sure that if you've studied, I'm sure you have, child of God, studied the earthly life and ministry of the Lord Jesus. And one of the main aspects of his ministry was that of preaching. Let me just show you that. Turn over, keep your hand in Acts chapter 20 for a moment, and turn over for a moment to Luke's gospel chapter, chapter 4. And you'll see this. And take a look what it says there in uh, the verse 16. We've already read verse 16. I've quoted it, but let us read it and then read on down some of these verses here. And you'll see, emphasize the importance that the Lord placed upon preaching the Word. It says in verse 16, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, verse 18 of Luke 4, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight of the blind, uh, to the blind, to set at liberty them that are uh, bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down in the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue, were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes. So it was prophesied in Isaiah that when the Messiah would come, he would come to exercise the art of preaching. He would come to preach the Word. Take a look on down that chapter, Luke's Gospel, chapter 4. Take a look at verse 42. And again, this truth is emphasized. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place, and the people sought him, and came unto him, and stayed him, that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for therefore am I sent. And he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. So there you can see the importance of preaching the word of God as far as our Savior was concerned in his public ministry. And of course, when the Lord sent his disciples out, he gave them the great commission, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
And of course, this truth is emphasized also when Paul was writing to young Timothy. And of course, young Timothy was a young minister. And this is what Paul exhorted Timothy to do in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 1. You needn't turn to it. Let me just read you these words. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. There's the exhortation. Preach the word in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Preach the word. Because the time will come. Timothy, when they will not endure sound doctrine. You know, child of God, we are really living in the days prior to the second coming of Christ. And men and women are tossed about with every wind of doctrine. And that's why it is important, week by week, when we meet in God's house, that we open up the Word of God and we preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. And that the preaching of the Word is foremost in our public worship. And it certainly was in this worship service in Acts chapter 20, because when Paul met these disciples, and when they met on the first day of the week, he opened up God's Word to them, and he preached to them from the Scriptures of truth. O oh, child of God, I pray that it will ever be in, in this house that the Word of God will ever be set forth. It's so important. It's so important week by week when we come to meet together that we open the Word and that the Word of God is declared and declared in all its fullness, even especially in these days in which we live. There's one, one more thought I leave with you just before we finish, and it's this. I want you to notice not only the day specified and the ordinance that was emphasized and the word that was magnified, but of course we could also say, fourthly, the Lord that was glorified. The, the Lord, of course, is always glorified when God's people worship Him in His appointed way. And surely that ought to be the desire of all of God's people when we meet for public worship. Thank God, I believe we can say here, when we consider this worship service here in Acts chapter 20, we can say that they enjoyed the presence of the Lord. They knew the presence of the Lord. The Lord was with them. And the Lord kept His hand upon them. And even on Eutychus that day, when he fell, he was raised to life again. And when you study, of course, the life of the Apostle Paul and the other apostles, when they went forth to preach and to serve the Lord and have their public worship services, they knew the presence of the Lord with them day by day. Child of God, that's what we desire every time we come into God's house to worship the Lord. On the Lord's day, we desire His presence. And thank God we have the presence of the Lord as we come to worship Him Sabbath by Sabbath, Lord's day by Lord's day. Whenever we meet in this house as a band of God's people, because the Lord's promise is this, that where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them, and that to bless. And isn't it wonderful as we're gathered in God's house this morning around His precious Word, as we sing these old hymns of Zion, as we meet together, isn't the Lord with us? Oh, thank God, what a blessing it is to be able to come into God's house and to hear the word of the Lord and to know that the Lord's still small voice is speaking to our hearts. It's tremendous. There's no greater blessing than to know the Lord's presence with us. And thank God, when we come into God's house, we can lift up our hearts and we can praise the Lord for His blessing and for His presence and for His Word. And we can praise the Lord that we serve a living 
and a resurrected Savior. It says at the end of this worship service that the people who were gathered, they were comforted, comforted through the Word of God. They were strengthened, I believe, through the preaching of the Word of God, knowing that the Lord was with them. To glorify and uplift the name of the Lord Jesus Christ ought to be our desire every time we meet together. There's a wonderful portion of Scripture as found in Psalm 96. I'm just going to read you these words. And here's what the psalmist says from verses 6 to 9. In fact, just turn over to it for a moment in Psalm 96. And look with me there at verses 6 to 9. You could read the whole psalm, but for sake of time, we'll just read a few of the verses here. It says this in verse 6 of Psalm 96. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I have no doubt that when Paul and the disciples met in Acts chapter 20, they experienced the beauty of the Lord. They knew the presence of the Lord with them. And thank God this day and every day we meet in God's house, we can say that the Lord is here. Oh, I wonder, child of God, has the Lord spoken to your heart this morning? Has the Lord met with you today? As we have worshipped together, as we have opened up the Word of God, as we have considered this passage of Scripture, has the Lord spoken to your heart? I pray that He has. And I pray that as we leave God's house this morning, that we will recognize the blessings that you and I have week by week as we come and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, as we meet with Him in the sanctuary, as we come and seek His face, as we come and sing the hymns of Zion and praise the Lord for His mercy and goodness to us, for we have so much to thank the Lord about today as we meet in God's house this Lord's day. We have a body out of the grave. We have a soul out of hell. Our sins are forgiven. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. What have we not why, what have we that we cannot rejoice today and praise God for all His goodness and all His mercies to us and that He has reached down and He has plucked us as brands from the burning. And thank God we can leave God's house today saying it was good to be here for it was here where we met afresh with the Lord. I pray that we'll never take these privileges for granted you know, there are places in this world today and they're not permitted. They're not allowed to meet in this fashion. Many of God's people have to meet underground. They have to meet in secret. They haven't got the liberty that we have. And yet in this country, with all its problems and difficulties, we have still this liberty that we can come and meet together at any time and worship the Lord. Oh, I pray that we'll not take it for granted, but that we'll thank the Lord day by day for the liberty that we have to worship the Lord in this fashion. I pray that God will bless these few thoughts to all of our hearts. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank Thee and we praise Thee today for Thy love and Thy mercy to us. We thank Thee, Lord, for the privilege of meeting together in this fashion. We thank Thee, Lord, for the privilege that we have of seeking Thy face, singing the hymns of Zion, opening up the Word of God. We thank Thee, Lord, for the privilege that we have of knowing that, Lord, we're here and that the Lord is here to bless us and to speak to us. Remember those who would love to be in God's house today, but because of ill health and old age and infirmity cannot come to God's house anymore. 
Lord, minister unto them. And Lord, we know that there are many in our own congregation who would long to be here and would be here. But, oh God, they're just not able, and we pray that you'll undertake for them. But, oh God, those of us who are healthy, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Each Lord's Day, Resurrection Day, help us, Lord, to seek out that place of worship wherever we're found in this world. Over this holiday time, Lord, help us not to neglect the Lord's Day. And help us, Lord, to teach our children, our grandchildren, our loved ones, the importance of the Lord's Day. And Lord, we'll be very careful to give to Thee the praise, the glory, and every bit of the honor. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sing a closing hymn. It's hymn number nine in the hymn book. With harps and with vials, there stands a great throng in the presence of Jesus and sing this new song. Let's stand and let's uh, really sing it out with all of our hearts. heaven we thank thee and praise thee for thy presence with us today bless us now separate us in thy love bless the drive-in service tonight 
We pray, Lord, that you would bless thy word as it goes forth again. Separate us now in thy love in our Saviour's name we ask it. Amen.